Uh, so we are gonna review quickly the graphic chapter 13 of the book Deep R. I didn't prepare any notes, even if we have, I have multiple weeks of doing it, because I feel like I was just gonna paraphrase the book. Mm. Because I think the book is just paraphrasing also the documentation. So mm. it's a good chapter. I will say it's an interesting chapter because it kind of makes you read the documentation, but it's also a chapter where you read the documentation. So I will mostly else I will mostly highlight what I think it's interesting from it. And we can maybe go through various examples. Um, and that's gonna be it. So we're gonna share my screen. Uh, sure. Oh, dang. So the Zoom is new too, so I have to set up everything. I think it's good yeah. enough. I just got a new computer, Austin. I think that's why I, my, I think I hadn't set up Zoom correctly yet, so it was it was crashing. Uh, oh, Zoom need to create. Uh... Yeah, you usually have to restart the application. Oh, later. I will get Is it working? Is it working or not? No. Dang. OK, so I'm going to leave and rejoin quickly. Okay. Is it working? Can I share my screen? Yes. Let's go with the old screen. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah we can see it. Uh, console. Uh, let's go with deep R. So first, let's review currently in R, you have two kind of parallel system to do graphic. In the chapter 13, we are going to see one, which is called is graphics. And the other popular one is called grid. And one of the grid implementation is ggplot2, which is a famous one. So to draw some kind of, I mean, I like starting by doing that. The graphics, uh, the graphics way of doing it it's kind of base of the pen plotters. I don't know if you have never seen a pen plotters, probably too young. Sorry, it's based off of what? A pen, a pen plot plotters. It's like they're mechanical, right? Yeah. Or, oh, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. This. Yeah. That's fun. I always wanted well, one. The, the printer were like that at one time. Whoa. They were like that. So basically, when you print something with a pen plotters and you add something on top of it, it just adds stuff. Mm -hmm. But you cannot access or update it. It's just a drawing. Mm -hmm. Like the grid or in way of doing it, it just divide the graphic into a bunch of block blocks and you can update the block. That's why, for example, um, in ggplot, you are chaining stuff. You are adding right. plus because you create an error object where you can update it. Here with the graphic option, it's I will say less modern <laughs> uh, because like you as a need to rerun all your script to update the layers and it's stacking layers. It's yeah anyway. So but it yeah it's still interesting and you have a lot of. Good stuff. So that's that's my first point. Like uh, I use ggplot. I mean, I use plot for very quick graph, and when I'm a bit lazy, because like when I was uh, when I learned R, ggplot didn't exist. Mm. But uh, for more like when I I want to have like some kind of better visual, I find it's easier to do with ggplot too. So 
And I don't think it's too much a dependency anyway. Uh, so this graphic is interesting because like, uh, well, you, you see like the two, um, the grid and the graphic one and all like the graphic uh, have like some high level function. So just a wrapper around the graphic subsystem, like plot new, plot windows, drawing, draw me a polygon, et cetera, et cetera. Y grid is another system that the author did not show. And then you are gonna call behind the scenes some device that are gonna be plotted. So this part, in fact, is useful even for ggplot2 users. And then like there are specific device that you can call that we're gonna see later. So uh, this, this graphic is nice. Um, well, you have some primitive and, and basically what the graphic uses is just adding these primitives on top of each other, which what we have so, so we can draw symbols, line, polygon, text, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, I will say also what I found like doing these examples and reading the chapters is the code is way more I mean, I will not say complicated, but have way more detail than the text. So like for, there is plenty of implementation, like why are you going to uh, start a new plot, plot windows? Why are we doing that in that order? So why here are we call it, like, for example, these par parameters, uh, even if you explain it here, like reading the code and the docu and the comment of the code are, uh, uh, way sometimes way more useful than with the text. That's uh, the overall feeling of these chapters. Why well, just draw this? <laughs> um, I will not get too much into that. Uh, the famous uh, multiple symbol you can have like with points. Uh, here, I, I don't think I learned anything uh, except uh, for point, you can modify the color and the background. I didn't know like you can like do that, but that's fairly minimal. Line segments here, nothing really big to know about it. I didn't know the type um, capital S and type S. I don't ever know if I were gonna use it. Yeah, um, they're distorting a little bit. Have to be fix. fair, I use just B, R, and P sometimes. And I have seen myself using H, like when I want want some kind of histogram and I'm lazy, but that's mostly for because of laziness. This section was very interesting. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, I totally like not realize how it worked until I read it. So basically it's like, you can like as a specify like a shortcut, like one, two, three, four, like one, two, three, four, five, six, etc. That's That's it. Or you can specify the length of the first black, then the what the space between the this one, then the, um, the 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 length of this dot. I mean, this is like a, a segment, and then of one, and then the um, the um, white space. So by specifying four, I think it will work with two, like I show here. But you can act like it's basically gonna recycle the length of the line. So if you have two, it's gonna research one, three, one, three, one, three. So you have like one black, length of three whites, one black, length of three, et cetera, et cetera. Or you can have more complex stuff. I didn't know that and I found it interesting. I didn't cool. understand why it was C4 by the way here. Mm. Um so this I I well it's it's probably anecdotic, but that's that's how I am. Uh, polygon, I, I, I learned it quite a lot. So I'm gonna go here. I didn't know, for example, like you can uh, adjust the density, uh, the angle to change like the, um, the, the size of the, um, the, I don't know, let's call it strips. And uh, what did I learn also here? Uh, and the LTI applied to the strips. And uh, I think you can uh, get good rendering if you are working on black and white setup. I was imagining like if I, I needed to render like something with like black and white or be more visual, uh, 
could have been uh, it, it could have been fun to play around it if you want to have like some black and white per uh visualization that's one to look old school but outside of it um well this was also like uh i i always forget this argument but it's probably like the most important issue you need to uh, remember one thing about me explaining stuff today is probably remember this argument that's under the aspect ratio of base plot of the x and y axis. So if you want to have like uh, by default plot that the, the plot base function will try to find what's the best version of the x and y axis on the display. But I feel a lot of time you just want to have both uh, aspects on the one one ratio. Because if not, um, let's do a quick implementation. So let's do x equal one to 10 and y. I'm gonna take uh, a sequence uh, starting at one and going to 20 and by Two, will it works? I don't know. We'll see. I'm bad at that. Uh, X, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. So, should be good. Blocks X and one. Oh, yes, obviously. And not one and Y. It, it's that way. And if you change the ASP equal one. It changed the the picture quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So on like the I don't like the defaults of not keeping the, <laughs> uh, the aspect ratio one one. Uh, I think it's better to always like be on on this uh, point of view. So like, but yeah, and I, I always forget that. Mm -hmm. Anyway, quick quick exploration. Uh, I didn't go too much into that, but this is the roots of, I mean, this is probably like one specific uh, circle of L. Like in my field, like specifying mm -hmm. the position label of something is a, is a little nightmare. Mm -hmm. And you can spend so much time losing so much of our life doing it. So I don't even want to know that I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think like I mean you have like I think like this is one of the insolvable problem of our life as <laughs> uh, as cartography and where do you display the label the, the place the label yeah. of the place and most of the time people are gonna use Adobe Illustrators or whatever you want to slightly move them and it's totally impossible to exactly do it but if you really want to do it, you can do it by either the position on the SRT, which I don't remember what's the what it means. The, that's under the rotation and the, uh, adjusting like the position. Like you can go either like on top of it or lower. But as I said, I feel a lot of time it's I mean, except if you are paying well to do that. Uh <laughs> it's gonna eat so much time. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people will ask for it, but they do not understand the amount of time it is to make it look nice. And I don't think it has been solved computationally. <laughs> uh, this was nice. I didn't know like you can specify the, the and adding more funds. Uh, I have never played with that, but I could definitely myself. I mean, I have done that with ggplot. I think ggplot is nicer for that, but you can also do it here. No big deal. Uh, and also, like I didn't know, you can also use the some small LaTeX with the quote, uh, which uh, I do not know, and we will learn later, but I do not know how IR is handling that. Like, how does he, he understand, like, because it's another language, totally. And yeah. Air, like managed to call LaTeX in some way. I didn't go into plot math, but what I 
I will I will know like I can just do that on graphic and it's nice to have like you know y equal alpha something parameters plus beta. It will look so nice, but I have I have no idea how under the hood it works and I kind of afraid to know. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I think you're right. I don't think you can't just quote anything and have it be latex yes. yeah. There's some implementation behind the scene, like <laughs> I'm afraid to go too much into the the width. Uh, I didn't know also like on the raster setting, uh, it was doing an interpolation by default. Uh, as you mm -hmm. see, the default is interpolate the color if you if you specify a matrix by colors. Uh, and you are using bitmaps, which is a weird, I mean, an old format, but that's do fine. Uh, that's. That's a good question when you want to remove the interpolation. I guess it's when you are like, the matrix you want to map is very specific and the interpolation is like creating noise. Mm -hmm. Nothing really to tell about that. Uh, yeah, if you have other remark, like go for it, but like I'm going through it, so. Uh, so what we have seen like previously was like the big block, kind of like if we go back to this, um, so this schema, we have seen like the, not, still not the, we have seen the graphics, kind of the graphics subsystem right now. Now we are gonna see the graphic device, which is basically what air does when it creates a plot. Uh, so we have seen like the, the point, the polygon, the, um, the text and, and the bitmap. So the basic components, I don't know, like, I think it's very hard to teach that in one chapter because like you, we kind of using the some, yeah. Anyway, now we are going to see the graphic setting, which I think was a very interesting chapters. Um, I will just go like uh, quickly. Um, so you can use like uh, a bunch of wrapper on that. The colors, uh, which is like a nice one. Uh, I really like, uh, where is it? This one, this part mm -hmm. of it. Because a lot of time uh, when I'm lazy, I'm doing call equal to because I like this one <laughs> and call equal four. That's my basic setup when I, I have two colors that I want to display. It's call two and call four. Mm -hmm. and you can just call the numbers instead of it. Um, but the color name, like I didn't know, like the, it's 657 colors that you can pick. And I have no idea to do it. Uh, I will not be agree with what he said, like computer science are badly equipped for choosing it. I think it's in the chapter, like he said, like uh, this is another, it's true that it's definitely another work. Like it's definitely a designer point of view. But like if you use our color Brewer from the, like this researcher's name, Brewer, Cynthia Brewer, I think, Cynthia, I don't know what her name is. Uh, let me check that. I have like some deep terror of <laughs> ggplot colors. Yeah, this so is, if you use like the... color brewer, which oh. brewer is the name of the researcher, uh, she's a very famous researcher in uh, in visualization. It provide you everything. So one of my defaults is checking that, and you can also like click on mm -hmm. seeing it, color blind safe, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I highly recommend that and you have a, like a package that also do it and but, my, yeah. my boss told me that I should just use the Wes Anderson color themes well, for I didn't know that was an visualization app. because she likes them. I didn't know that was an she did her dissertation in. That's smart. Yeah you have plenty of packages that have like version of uh colors. Yeah. For my personal case, I go with the fastest option, which by default is two and four. Yeah. <laughs> and for the company, usually like we have like a, a R package that's right. like on the company teams. So I'm just putting the teams. Right. I need to make a a, a package and, and a theme for our branding guidelines, but that hasn't happened yet. I mean, this is like something that's I mean, I know it's sometimes upfront, but we'll save time. Yeah. For a long time. 
for everyone. Right. We have one and yeah, just having it with the phones, with the, the colors, and you can just pull it. It's a lot of saving times. But to the points, you can also specify it for graphic. You can also set up the option for graphics too, if you really want. The author discussed that. Uh, I kind of, yeah, it's an option, I would say. I think it's easier doing JJ plot, but that's my personal point of view. What I learned here, like I should go into that. I didn't know like where is this? It's um the RGB, you have like oh you have nice wrapper function if you want to convert from one to one. Mm -hmm. I can either like have the RGB or the call to RGB. So if you have the color and you want the RGB, you can do that. Or if you want the RGB. So these two functions are I, I didn't know they are Andes. And where is the alpha? Uh, da, 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 we're touching that. Um, uh, I, I noticed like normally like the color like uh, it's red, red, green, green, blue, blue. But if you have like you have another option, no, uh, we have another option with uh, where is it? Well, you can set up alpha. Because I didn't do that, and it's very neat. No, it's probably oh, higher row. Some transparency, is it? Transparency. Yeah, the trans you can set up the transparency inside of the RGB code, which is nice. But where is it mentioned? Oh, is it? Is it? Uh, yeah, uh, let's go down a little bit, and then this sec. Uh, the second paragraph of the first. Uh, this is bigger. Oh, here. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Yeah. So it's also, this is also by a valuable uh, option. And uh, yeah, so it's great. Like if you want to have like some lot of data, you can just ask the, um, the RGDB code, like for example, from call to RGB and then adding the alpha here. And it's something that I always ask trouble and never want to do it. <laughs> so uh, it was nice. Uh, so this was like the highlight of the color for me was the that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go into the parameter of the. Um, all of these graphics are very nice, by the way, and I will use them a lot mm -hmm. because, like, no, uh, and the way like he created them also a very um, thoroughful guide, and I think like I will. I mean, it's kind of painful reviewing them now. And saying, oh, you should do that, do that, and do that. But I think when I, if I need to use best uh, graphic and I want to have some kind of word results, I know that I will get to open the book and 100% use this one and the next one, not this one. Yeah. Uh, because the, yeah, I this I think they are highly pedagog pedagogical and very well made with all the. Um, you have the like where the text is, what you can do. Like for example, like I didn't know by default, I uh, air was clipping the stuff outside of the main point. See, like this is like the the non dashed line, but you can also remove that. And I think with that you can do very interesting uh, rendering. Like if you want, like uh, I mean, I'm not a graphic designer by <laughs> any kind of mean. But like sometimes it's interesting to have like you know some data that's crawl outside of their, of yeah. their place. So mm -hmm. yeah, that was that was definitely interesting. Uh, I didn't know about the outer margin. I use really like which is Omar Omar. I never use that parameters, but uh, yeah, the the ma the this version of it was uh, I I know well. Uh, by the way, like currently like. In this first part, you show how to do with the ID like one graph, one page. But after we can see like the or you can combine a bit later. Um so here we go back to see like the kind of the same stuff, like the aspect ratio. Uh it go way way into the width, into like uh how exactly um the size are defined. And I didn't know about the use of parameters that allow you to size to set. That's basically how you have like the size of it. It's basically like the 
users like a bounding box of four coordinates, which one, two, three, four, and then you index them minus the other one to get the size divided by the, which is the point inch, which is kind of not the inch, but et cetera, et cetera. So you have the exact size. So you, reading all of that, I found it interesting. I would probably be able to hack my way into it if I know, but I'm happy that someone is setting that for me. <laughs> That's it. Um, what did I mention? Oh yeah, uh, I have no way of reminding what the order of the parameter here. So I write, uh, I think it's bottom, left top right which like you start here then you go then you go clockwise mm -hmm. but i will probably never remember that and need to go checking the book <laughs> yeah but like yeah then you go into like yeah you can draw the axis but you can also use a function that do that for you and then I think, yes, I'm going to use the access <laughs> the function that wrote that for me. Uh, the same, I think, like the example are very well made and understanding exactly what's happened. Uh, what did I write about that? X? Yeah. Yeah, the parameter, like if you want to clip, it's XPD, I think. Let me check that. Because this one is nice. I, I want to play with that one. Yeah, XPD equal true. So if you if you if you add that, it will clip to the figure regions, and uh, if you don't, it will clip to the. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, so this is the parameters. Uh, yeah, you go into like the axis, what's the axis, etc., etc. So what one point is like if you are familiar with that, I think it's a very powerful tool. But I feel this is a lot of commitment. Like mm -hmm. if you are not a graphic designer, yeah. Or if you were like, um, maybe like if you have a lot of Sunday and want to set up your style, you can go very big. But I do not have that time. Yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting. Uh, the code are set by users. You can set subplot. You can also like like it's basically like you can also like uh, where is it here? You can also like have like way more complicated layers. Um, the graphic design device, I will not say too much about it. Uh, it's interesting because like you have way more control about it, but I think ggplot have an option on ggsave that do kind of similar. Correct me if I'm wrong, but, um, I will just highlight what the author said. Like if you are going to use some image that's very precise, you should rasterize it and use a PNG. Mm -hmm. But yeah. if you want like some like uh, like SVG is a vector format, so you can like it will rescale always better because it has full geometry, but it will usually are uh, bad if you have a lot of information. So it's good to know, but like no. Mm -hmm. You can also lose your life learning ticks, <laughs> which is a LaTeX package for doing very nice stuff. And I'm and I think like this was drawn with sticks. This is uh, uh, yeah. But um I have tried when I was a PhD student to do it. And I think I lose three days of my life. <laughs> it's probably like an underestimation. So yeah, I remember I we mean, had an assignment where I had to use it and it was painful. Yes. Yeah, so. Except if you have like, uh, I don't know when I, you should do ticks. <laughs> I have no idea when it's a good way of doing it. Anyway, I guess my advice is to avoid it. Sure. And for most of my workflow, I'm fine with uh, an interface on Mermaid or GraphViz. And they do like, yes, it's not perfect, but making it perfect is not my job. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, this dev all dev flush, I didn't know. I don't know if I will always use them. So when you call a graphic, you can cancel it up. Uh, just for the, for the mention of it, 
So I use this. I like this. What? I use this. I like this. Dev of the the green GD package. Yes, uh, that's uh, and he's using the same interface. So it's yeah. not just like PNG and SVG, and you can use this package to do it mm -hmm. because it uses like the same syntaxes. You can like and then at the end you are. Uh, let me see. I think so. You know it, but like one of my point was like saying like. You can use this package. I mean, this package use also like the same. Um, use the the graphic device option to send the graphic to uh, an HTTP server, mm -hmm. and then you can use this. All of those commands are compatible to HTTP DD. So it's not only the old stuff. Like also new stuff can integrate it. Anyway. And I use it also at GDPGD. It's great. <laughs> yeah, and you get. Uh, I mean, I just like that it has a nice. Uh, you know, it has like a memory of the previous plots, and you could just click through the. What are your all the plots you've done in that session, and and look at them. That's what I like about it. But also, I like my browser window more. Oh. Than the as I like the right panel, like as I like the right panel of Rush Studio or the viewer. Yeah. 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 And it works also if I'm for whatever reason in the terminal. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Then we go like into like the high level function. Uh, there's no really point going through them. Like it's mostly ex uh, example. One nice one is like the mat plot and mat line that I discovered is usually like, for example, when I, when you want to draw to do, yeah, do we give an example? I don't think you give an example here. Oh, here, no, it give one. Yeah, mat plots and the mat line, like all the mat stuff, I didn't know about it and they are useful because in, for example, in this example, usually when I was reproducing it, I was drawing one line, then another one. And if you use MATLINE, you can you can pass you can provide a matrix, and it will draw the bus line instead of having a double line. So it mm -hmm. saved it saved line of code, and then you just need to modify in one places. You are because like when you do this kind of work like with height, mean, low. Let's say like I'm not doing it, but I'm using like let's say I have like a linear model function, then I'm gonna generate the prediction. Mm -hmm. From like the like I'll say like the nineteen whatever the percentage, and what's this uh, predict function will return me is a matrix. So I can directly pass the matrix to that, and I will have like as I using them, like the here it's a polygon that it used, but uh, I, you can also send two lines etc etc. So I didn't know about this matplot uh, function. Uh, like it is this, so I encourage you like reading about it. I think it was worth learning. Uh, yeah, I give an example of the alpha also. Um, uh, because like, yeah, the map plot, like, so you have like, you have like, you have it for all the, um, all the math stand for matrix. I learned that also. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's a good shortcut and it probably make your mm -hmm. less copy paste and less change when you need to do so less error so i like it it's and i'm gonna use it so i think like you do a pretty good job like uh, i'm impressed by um but like i i'm far from doing it <laughs> Pretty good. uh well the bar plot and histogram yeah nothing to know except like uh you probably have gone through that like this was super uh interesting um example so if you have not done it like are oh, like you are using the internal of the um, the midpoints from the bar plot so mm -hmm. you are generating like the 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 bus distribution then you can get uh the midpoints and then uh, adding on top of it so this example is worth the going through slowly i need also using like the power use three etc etc to reset up the scale. So if you know how to set up the scale, you can. And then this this was quite interesting, I think. This is probably like the best example and the Pareto example. 
So yeah, if you have some time, go through it slowly. I mean, I, we can live and spend some time, but yeah. I think it's a very- Thought yeah. about this as like, much less technically how to do it, just as like a just type of visual oh, display. Yeah. Either way. I think, yeah, it's somewhat useful. Yeah, but it's, yeah. It's true that probably not everyone will understand it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, well, going through that, like the faceting stuff, um, the different kind of bin, you should test it. No point going into that. This was nice too. And it's mm -hmm. just like basically like you basically create four panel and you populate them. And one is empty. And you go into it. Like this is density. For me, it was not new because I use this density function a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so yes, it's nice, but etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So the, yeah, I, I don't think. And then you go into like a deep example uh, of a uh, control plot. And I think there are better packages that do that. <laughs> this was my point of view. But you know. He's able to mix the bitmap, then the stuff. So he's, he's quite like smart and et cetera, et cetera. So that was it. I didn't spend too much time on it. Uh, even if I had a lot of time. Uh, I will say that if I had to summarize it, I will use the plot. That's my first top level. <laughs> but, the, and the second one is like for quick plots, uh, I will probably use the aspect ratio and then the alpha. That's my top take. Mm -hmm. and if I had like a week to spend on doing nice graph, you know, like if, for example, I was like um, doing some kind of branding for myself of my company and for whatever reason we did a ggplot, I think it will be worse to explore it more and basically like write, write it. I also think it's interesting to play with because this is more programming friendly that mm. maybe JJplot. I mean, it's directly programming more friendly. Like it's mm -hmm. directly, uh, see like, for example, like uh, okay. quickly you're gonna use, uh, it's gonna use like some, uh, where is it? Uh, not here, but like, you are gonna add apply on split and stuff like that. And then then like you are using a for loop on every densities, like it's become way more like programming yeah. than ggplot, which is way more package in a good way. That was it. Yeah. I my feeling too is in like it I would use it if I ever for some reason needed a figure that was like pretty bespoke, you know, that you know, like uh like maybe if I had to drop polygons on top of something mm -hmm. or like do some, you know, something that there's no package for, then I think base R starts to be more appealing. But if there's a, you know, if someone else has already done the work on the, on a package. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I agree with you. Like I also sometimes like, 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 you know, a very, um, you know, sometimes you just want to draw something and you want to remove everything. Just like have a very focus on something and you can do that with ggplot. Like you need to, uh, it's easier to remove stuff from uh, this graphic stuff yeah. than from ggplot, which came with loaded with a lot of uh, interesting and nicely opinionated option on all you wanted. I personally use them black and white or minimalist all the time on ggplot. I'm like, so I should probably setting setting up on my uh, environment uh, profile, but um, yes, I I found it easier on base plot to remove stuff and then having just like let's say for example I'm working on some uh, I have like some mapping of some like let's say like some river stream and I just want the river and mm -hmm. not and then I remove everything just I just want the shape of it then I'm gonna use base plot, but. Uh, yeah, for the story, when I was a student, uh, one of my training placement was drawing tree with a base R function. So oh. people were measuring silly, I mean, young trees with like mm -hmm. a 3D stuff, like, you know, like you are pointing in a mag, like, it was like, how does tree like, um, 
tree under the shed are, are some shape. And when you remove the shade, they kind of change their shape to collect more light. And researcher was like basically digitizing 3D tree uh, with like some tools before and after. One of my job was making drawing, I mean drawing, representation of that in base R plot. So I'm very <laughs> familiar <laughs> with a lot of that sounds typical. That's a cool project though. Huh. It's just like basic trigonometry, like you calculate a lot of cosinus. So you have, because like basically you get points and cosinus and your angle in two dimensions. So it was, it was a nightmare, but I managed it. They published that shit anyway. I, 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 I'm always surprised, but who's going to read that? But, uh, <laughs> so it wasn't best. Oh, I don't know why. Anyway, I was students. I didn't care. <laughs> you do what you have to do. That's it. Um, cool. Well, yeah, that was very interesting. Um, and yeah, no, I you kind of convinced me to look at some of that in more detail. I think. I think my blocker is just that you know working on a team. I think if I yeah. was like, here's some code for you to also collaborate on, and it's not in ggplot, they would feel extremely betrayed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think they'd like that. I know. No. Like I'm one hundred percent like with you. Use GG and especially like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're like, also not. My team is not really doing much to that. Is that sophisticated visualization wise? Like we we have so many more like basic level problems like data cleanliness, uh, and like lack of sophistication in general in our data pipelines that getting yes. really. Use our graphics feels like a luxury we are not at yet, but maybe one day. Yeah, no, that's that's appear like if you have like for example like on my team we have like a a, a dev uh, like a, a software uh, dev uh, developer that's very focused on visualization. Then you know like yes you can be interested into that, but even even with that setup, at the end of the day you're gonna use D three. Uh, like some JavaScript plugin or or, or ggplot because like if you check like Washington Post, New York Times, uh, all the big journals that have like graphic design folks, they use ggplot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I did. I took a class on on D three and and interactive visualizations for the web and I it was so hard for me I was not good at it but it was really it was a really cool class and actually some of the graphics um stuff actually does remind me of the way that works more than GG the way ggplot works yes yeah. it's like some some similar like underlying principles of how the drawing happens yeah but like yeah I agree it's it's a old field. Uh, it's interesting, like it's stuff like this, like, yeah. I think it, it was fair for the book to add it because like uh, you need it, but I do not think uh, it's good to have an understanding of it also, but yes. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I. Anyway. That's it. Next week, we're going to review like how we integrate codes, I mean, compile codes. And uh, and that's it. Yeah, I unfortunately won't be there, but I hope to be back the next time. Yeah, I, 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 I can make it next week, but I don't think I can present. Though. Okay. I don't, I yeah, don't. no, I, I think it's good if we like, like the book, we have already spent a lot of time on it. Now we need to close yeah. it. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> need to move on with our lives. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Like I said, and, this time worked for me before, but now, like, we've gone on long enough that my schedule has actually evolved. Yeah. And, you know, it's fine if we don't do the example or and go back into the old exercise. Uh, it can be just a quick summarize, like, here's what I learned. Uh, obviously, the book offer more, yeah. and that's why it's a book, and you can still use it if you have time. But uh, I feel like I progressed with this book. And no, I will be happy to reopen it in six mm -hmm. months or, or if I need. Like, yeah. I think this was also one take from these chapters. It's a good, like, if I want to do something in Airbus plots, I know that this chapter exists. Yeah. Right, I know where to find, find yeah. help. Yeah, I definitely feel that. And I think, 
I think that so far the book club has been really helpful for me and I wish I had more time yeah. to spend on it. Because when I had when I was spending more time on it, it was more helpful. Yeah. But I, I definitely improved a little bit too, just from the like I, I think it has been really helpful. So yeah. No, it's it's it like on the overall of this book, I think like there's like the usefulness of this book and the usefulness of the book club. On this book, I think it's a lot of exercise to make you a better programmer, which even if it's boilerplate, like let's build um your version of the Redis function or let's build all of that is valuable because you get an understanding how it works mm -hmm. better. And um yes, and then on the book club, it's nice. And uh and it's give a schedule for going through all of this book and complete it. And right. even if it's completed not exactly the same way on everything, it's it's good to complete it and know like what's inside of this book and can refer to it if needed. Right. Sure. That's I have my gone point. back in the past couple of weeks or months. I've gone back to the characters mm -hmm. chapter yeah. many times. I'm like, yeah. okay, we did talk about that, and I need to figure out how to do it now. And I know it exists. Yeah, I had to do that too, actually. Yeah, the printf and all the possible options and the right. formats. Yeah. Also, the I've been really making a lot of use of the uh, globe to rx to regex. Yeah. Now that, that's like I think maybe the best thing that I've learned uh, from this because trying to come up remember regex is not a strong suit of mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. This, this, this is like, like we should maybe like on the last meeting do like. Yeah. Our top ten yeah. learning, and uh, that will be interesting. That's yeah, fun. that's a good idea. Okay, well, thank you for walking us through it this week, and see you next week. Bye. Oh, no, Bye. next week. Oh, don't forget to say. Stop. Oh yeah, I need to type end. Oh, you can type end. Yeah. I have to go loud up, but... Is it end or stop? End. I don't know. End. I think it's end. I always go with end. Maybe I failed.